outsource your work. Outsourcing the work means that you get someone that knows a lot of math, knows a lot of computers, cannot make a lot of money and put that person to do the work. So what do I want to do here? I'm going step by step. This is more or less the same thing we did the first time with desks and tables. Now we make two models of motors, A and B. And as we make two models of motors, we want to see how much of A and how much of B we will be able to make in order to get most of the profit. Therefore, we need to focus into two points. One is how we make it. And then what is happening with the profit? It doesn't matter which one goes first or goes second. It doesn't matter which information you put first or second when you talk about the problem. But it does really matter how the person who is going to do the coding is going to do the code. I'm not going to ask you to do the code, but I want you to understand what is happening. So let's say that you want to go to Bulgaria. In Bulgaria, $15 per hour is not the minimum wage. It's much more than the minimum wage. And in Bulgaria, you can get guys who can play with computers and know mathematics that are much better than any guy you can get in Brooklyn. So instead of doing it here, guy's friend in Sofia can do the work. He make the connection. He gets 10% because of the connection. The guy in Sofia is doing the work. He gets $5 per hour. Guy gets 10% of that part and you save the rest of the money. What do you want to do? You can take and look at what is happening with your profit. I'm rearranging the case. <clears throat> the important thing is model one, model A and model two makes different contribution per profit sold. So what do you see? Model one is more profitable than model two, right? I want you to be able to have all that information, see it and know exactly what is going on. Then we go in three different type of processes. These processes have a given order. You cannot go to the first without, to the second without going to the first. And that's important. I want you to know that first you do the wiring, then you do the drilling, then you do the assembly. You have three different processes in making two different type of models. And in every process, model A and model B takes different time to be processed. Clear? Model A takes three hours in wiring, two hours in drilling, and one and a half hours in assembly. How much time it takes so I can have one unit of model A. Did I give you an answer or not? In order to complete one model A motor, do I know how much time it takes? Uh, yes, professor. Good, and I'm glad that uh, there is answer. Very, what do I need to do? 
Um, you need to multiply the wiring, the drilling, and the assembly. And Mathematica is here that told me I can be able to do it. Um, I think it was nine hours. Three hours. It's a multiplying. Times two hours. Times 1.5. It's add, right? Or what? What is the thinking? Yes, he correct. I, I thought it was add, professor. I thought you had to add the hours up. Yeah. Hey, if instead of multiplying, you add the hours, you have a difference. And I want you to know what is the important part that you will get back from Bulgaria. And this is extremely important information. So then yes. is adding and you need to add it. If you add, you know that the module A is made in six and a half hours. Is this clear? Yes. And I go to Queen. Esther says that we have two different pieces of information in the problem. What is given to me explicitly and what I can be able to make implicitly by adding, multiplying, dividing, subtracting things together. And as I have some information, I get more information. And if I have to communicate with people, I can use anything I want. And Esther may say, if I have to communicate with my competitors, I can say that Model A is made in six and a half hours, but I'm not going to tell them how I make it. That is going to be my business. Right, Esther? Yeah. So Esther is a manager of type one, type A model. Erica is a manager of the type B model. Eric. Erica says, same thing, model two. You need two hours to wire, one hour to drill, and half an hour to assembly. Therefore, two hours to wire, one hour to drink, and half an hour to assembly is three and a half hours to make a model B. This is implicit information. You don't know it. But as you have these two models, you also know something else. What do you need to know? If you make that comparison, how many hours you can make model B and how many hours you can make model A? you get this number. It's almost half. So that means that Christine, that is managing both Model A and Model B, she has two different managers, Esther and Erica, she knows that in order to make Type A and Type 2 models, the relationship is as much time as it makes one, it takes you almost twice to make the other. Or we can do the same thing by inverting that information. 8.5 divided by 3.5, it's close to two. How you make these two orders? through two models. You get information from that. You take that information and these two lines are telling you how you make model A and model two in three different processes. Then you go on and you look at what is available. And here you have According to the book, the available hours 
of different people in different processes. The available hours of different people to different processes. You see it, Damien? Uh, yes, sir, I see it. And this is what is in the book. But I don't want you to look only what is in the book and be book smart. I want you to be street smart. And I go back to the assumption that I made before. The assumption that I made before was that if Diamond hires one person and that person works five days a week, and this person works for seven hours a day, then that person works 35 hours a week. But if a person works for five days a week and goes to the payroll to be paid, is paid for eight hours a week. So that person is paid for 45, for 40 hours. You need to control one, you need to control the other. I will take how many hours that person is working. Is this clear? And I go on and I ask the question. <clears throat> the question is that if you have a need for 240 hours, you have a need for 240 hours, and a person is working 35 hours a week. How many people do you really need for the wiring time? You solve it and you have a number. You have a number and as you have the number here, Gail says, this is not a decimal point. I need to see it in decimal points so I can really make sense of what is happening. And if you see that, then Azarel says, I need to make a decision here. Do I really need to have six people or I need to have seven people? Azarel, what do you want to have? Six people. But if you have six people, you will be working a little bit less. If you have seven people, you may have something more. And this is what I want you really to focus. If you go on the same way to look at what is happening, I didn't need capital for the comment. If I have 100 to 10 over 35, and if I have 120 over 35, then I need to make a clear choice. This is a managerial choice. You have to make it that you manage the process here in New York. The guy in Bulgaria can give you only the numbers, but you need to make a choice. For the first process, wiring, are you going to have six or seven people? The second problem, drilling it easily. You can get six. For the third process, assembly, are you going to have three or four people? And I want you to make decisions in the process. Is this clear? Yes. And this is what I want you to know from the beginning. And as you have the problem, I want you to analyze the problem, not the way that the book is giving to me that was written by mathematical guys that are not in business, but the way I understand the problem and I can see it 
and the flexibility that the problem is giving me because I'm in business and I'm not a mathematician. And I know additional information. I know how many hours I need to make a model A. I need to know how many hours I need to make model B. Then I compare model A and model B and I can say that more or less is about two times more or half time to make one model than the other. But it's not exact, two is 1.8. And I know how to go through when things change. And as things change, I need to control these changes. I give the problem to guys front in Bulgaria. And guys front in Bulgaria is giving me the code. You don't have to do it. You get it. And as you get it, you can go on and you can put it in different color. I want you to understand what this is. I don't want you to do it you already have it done it's done based upon what is the problem i want you to take the problem and understand what is happening with the problem and give me the additional information that you have in the problem after you get that additional information that you get in the problem i want you to understand and see what is the code when I was a student, that's what I was learning. I get a problem, put it in a code, solve it and have a solution. And that was fine, but that was in the seventies. Today, that's not fine, but today is not in the seventies. It's a big difference. Today I have a computer. In the seventies, I had to do that and I had with no computer and not calculators to calculate the answer. And the answer is this one. Now I get the answer very easy. I look at the case and I want to see what this is. I look at the style and this is, this is an input text. I go on further up. And I see what I have here, I have the problem. I look at my style and I see this is a text. The text is something that I put so I would understand what is happening. The input is something that I can put, the input is something that I can put in order to make calculations. I gave that to you already with the solution, but I played a dirty trick the day before. I didn't have a solution here. What do you see here? This, you see something important. If you run something, it tells you, you have an input and you get an output. How many times you request to have something calculated? How many times? You have outcome. Two times. Here? Yeah. What do you have here? You have a code. You put your cursor anywhere in the code. It doesn't have to be at the end. It can be anywhere in the code. It can be anywhere in the code. As long as the cursor is in the code, not outside of the code. If it is in the code, then the only thing you need to do is put shift enter and you get an answer. What is the meaning of the answer? As the case is here, you make only 120 units of motor two, nothing of motor one. And you make profit $1,800. And I want to be, to be able to see, is this my case? 
if I make 120 units of motor two, and I have $15 profit for motor two, this is the answer. But is this what I want to make is my question. And can I make any changes to that particular case? And I go on to look at the alternatives. Do I have any alternatives? And I ask Mystic, where are you Mystic here? Mystic says, yeah, you can have alternatives. You can take that information that you have, you can copy it. As you can copy it, you can paste it once, twice. Why once, twice to look at two different cases? What do I want to do? I go back and I look at my case. Wiring, drilling and assembly. I can have different requirements of people. I want to see what would happen if I move with the upper or with lower case. I go on and in this case, I will put what is happening here. I can have six people that can work 35 hours, right? Or I can have seven people that work for 35 hours. Then I go on and see what is happening with the next case, drilling. Not a problem, it's the same for everybody. Drilling, I can have six people that work 35 hours and I can have six people that work 35 hours. And assembling, I can have three or four. I can have three people in assembly that work 35 hours or I can have four people that work 35 hours. Professor, yes, sir. that is as long as you don't exceed those hours, right? This is what you guys told me. A person in a week works five days for seven hours. I can be able to put it in that particular way, work five days for seven hours. It doesn't matter how I enter it and how I control it. Because everything depends where this is happening. And then you pay them differently. If you have these two alternatives, uppercase and lowercase, how many motors you will produce in one case and how many motors you will produce in the other case. And you have the same pattern. And the pattern is simple. The pattern say that you produce only motors two. But you look at the case and most of the profit are coming from motor one. And if you were a student 35 years ago, my professor would give you an A because you solved the problem. But if you are a student in my class, I'm not gonna pass you because you didn't do anything. The only thing you did is you put shift and enter and the computer solved the problem. And I want you to think what is happening. And if I make more profit in motor A, I want you to tell me why I don't produce something that is more profitable. Because if you want to be a manager, that's my question. I don't give a damn shit if this is the question, the answer, and if this is correct. This is a technical calculation. I want to know why do I produce only motor B and not motor A. 
even the fact that motor A is more profitable per unit than motor B. But then again, motor B is takes less the time, le um, double the less the time to make, so that's what makes up the numbers. Correct. And I want you to tell me what is happening. And now, if you have only these two models, you can be able to find out in a very simple way. You can graph it. And the graph can obviously tell you what is happening. So, guy calls his friend in Sofia. And guy says, okay, I want to see what is happening with the graph. I take this out. I want to see the graph, guy said. I take it and I go to the brown and I put the graph and I want to graph what is happening here. What do I want to graph? What is happening with model A and model B? If I graph it, I see the graph. And I ask you the question, guys, did you take algebra? And Erica says yes. Then I want you to tell me, do I have any problem here? But Erica said, professor, that's advanced. I want to do it more simple. So I said, okay, I will take it and I will copy the part that I want to do in a simple terms. I will go further up here. I will paste it at that point and I will make it simple. What do I want to do? Wiring for model one. It takes three hours. Wiring for model two, it takes two hours. Drilling for model one, it takes two hours. Drilling for model two, it takes one hour. Assembling for model one, it takes an hour and a half. Assembly for model two, it takes half an hour how many people I have. In one case, I have seven people that work five hours and they're working five days for seven days a week. Drilling, I have six people that work five days for seven days a week. Assembly, I have four people that work for five days, for seven days a week. I take it and I want to graph it. Before I do it, I'll make it to look nice. So I will put ups. I will put the variables here in such a way that it's going to be nice looking and I will have exactly what is going on. I will put this here and this here. I have it and I want to graph it. This. Um, professor. Me. Yes, professor, sir. That last one, the assembly time, the assembly time you put four, five and five. Good. Damian, did I do it purposely or I made a mistake? I think you did it on purpose, sir. And you have to learn. In business, mistakes are made. 
And if mistakes are made, you want to be a manager or not? If you want to be a manager, you need to know what is happening and you need to do whatever Damien did it. And if Damien has 4.0 or 2, it doesn't matter. He is going to be a manager because he pays attention and he knows what is happening. If Damien gets a bachelor or doesn't get a bachelor, it does not matter because he knows what is going on. What is the important point? The easy part is to make a graph. Everybody can get a 4.0, take a math class and make a graph. You don't have to do it because the computer does it for you. The difficult part is what is the meaning of this graph? And I'm teaching that stuff for about 35 years. And I haven't seen any book that tells me what is this graph. And I want to know, do I have a problem? The computer does not tell you if you have a problem. The computer gives you a solution. What is the solution that I get from the computer? I see it here for these numbers, seven, six, and four, seven, six, and four. This is the solution. You make only model B. How much you make model B? 120 units. Actually, this is not your profit because this is profit calculated for 120 and a half, but you do not have 122 and a half. You make only 120. And in this 120, the half doesn't count. You need to see how much is the profit. The profit is $15. So the total profit is 1830. It's not 1837. Is this clear, Damien? And this is what I want you to be able to do. And I want to graph it. It's easy to graph if it's only two dimensions. If I have to make a schedule and I have five different type of peoples to schedule, I cannot graph it. And I need to have enough experience to find out what the heck is going on. But if I graph it, I want to see what is happening here. Do I have a solution? Yes. I have an axis. The first axis is the horizontal. The second is the vertical. I have an axis here. I can be able to take that information and I can put more identifying the axis. This is aesthetical part. I leave it behind. I care for the essence row. Where is the solution? The solution is up to here, 122 units of X. Yes, Robert. Professor. Yes. Can you explain the lines, uh, which one represents which? Horizontal is the first. No, no, I'm talking about the shade, the blue, the green, and the orange. This is easy for me to find out. I will take it and I will copy it. I will go on and I will paste it. I'll paste it three different times. The first case, I'll have only one. The first case, I have only one. I have problems. Okay. This is the wiring. That's the wiring. Got it. This is the wiring. If this is the wiring, and I want to put the wiring and the drilling together, I'll take the assembly out. 
This is the wiring and the breathing together. Okay. And this is what I want to keep you. What is the problem? Is there any problem? Um. And I want Jerry to tell me what is the problem. Um, well, yeah, the time in between the the wiring and the was that the and the drilling was that the, the orange was the drilling or the wire um, assembly. The blue is the wiring. The other is the drilling. The drilling. Um, the solution is hundred twenty here. My problem is why don't I produce any of model A? I don't care what is the right answer. The right answer does not tell me anything. The right answer is for stupid people. The right answer is this one. The computer does the right answer. My problem is what is my problem? And my problem is here. And I see it graphically. Do I have a problem? Yeah. And Esther said, I have two lines, but they do not intersect. And I say, okay, Esther, you passed math. Or Esther may say, I have two equations with two unknowns, therefore a system that does not have a solution. And I said, good, Esther, you got A plus in algebra. What do I need to do? But Esther is in business. And Esther can give me one answer. And Erica can give me another answer. And both of them can give me different answers. And both of them may be correct. Esther may say that get few people in wiring or get more people in drilling. And I have a different graph. If I want to extend the graph, I can extend the graph. It's easy. This tells me I cannot stop at 110, but I go to 190. This tells me that I will not stop at 250, but I'll go to 350. I will do it. I will have a graph. Do I have a problem? It's still the same thing. And this is the, not the mathematical, but this is the managerial problem that I have. What do I need to do? <coughs> what do I need to do? Um, professor, before anything, what do you need to identify before addressing the problem? Because you're saying we have a problem, but what is the objective of the problem that we're trying to figure out? An Esther that got A in map says that in order for a system to have a solution, these two lines need to have an intercept. Okay. And you need here to get Erica. Erica, what can I do? And Erica may say, maybe Are we increasing? take this in last time and maybe you can do this in half a time is there anything going on right now yeah, let's go back to erica erica what did you do she said i talked to the guy here that makes model one to be more productive and wire 
the model in half a time. And I put for drilling, the guy who does the drilling to do it 20% faster. But if Erica did this one, if Erica did this one, you see this problem here and the implication that I get is that something is missing. It's not here, it's something is missing. That says that you continue. You go on and here you're fine. What do you do here? You produce model A or model B? This is your solution. Now you produce more of model A and less on model B. What did you do? You substitute, move from this point to this point. And I want to go back to profitability. I want to go on and see is Erica helping me to make more profit or less profit? Because Erica is a production manager. I'll take that information and I go where I get my problem. I get my problem here. What did I do? I increase my productivity here by 20%. And I increase productivity here by doubling it, which means I do it in half a time. 1.5 from 3. I solve the problem. As I solve the problem, I have a different solution. But having a different solution now I produce 70 units of model one and 70 units of model two. And as I produce 70 units of model one and 70 units of model two, I make more profit. How much I was making before? 1820. How much I make now? More. Do I know how much I make? I don't trust anything. I need to make the calculations. 70 units that have $22 profit and 70 units that made $15 profit. How much they make? And I verify my answer. Now I'm comfortable. This is my answer. I have an answer. What do I want to do? I want to make a comparison. Jacqueline is the manager. She doesn't care if you know math, if you use Mathematica, if you use Excel or anything else. Jacqueline wants to evaluate Erica. And Erica tells her that now she makes that amount of money while before we're making that amount of money. What Jacqueline cares? Jacqueline cares the, fa the fact that she makes $760 more. And that's what she cares. What she does? She gives Erica a promotion. She doesn't keep that money for herself. She gives Erica a promotion. Why? Because when Erica gets more money, Erica wants to be able to do more with the problem. And I want you to start thinking not as business students who have to take a quantitative class or as business students that you have to use math, but go on to a step further. And I want you to start thinking as business students who use computers to make math easy in order 
to think in business terms differently. And if this is the case, if this is the case, then you want to go on and see the alternative. But if this was three, uh, no, this was six people and this was four people. From four, you had three. Do you make more money or less money? This is what Zaklin cares for. And Zaklin can make decisions not with Erica that is managing the production, but with Marie that is managing the human resources. And Zaklin will say, Marie, go ahead and hire one more guy in wiring and one more guy in assembly. Why? Because we make more motor A models and making more motor A models, we make more money. We don't make that much. We made that much. How much is the difference? About $500 difference. And I want to know how to present the results of playing around with my problem which means that I need to know my problem. And if I need to know my problem, I don't need to do the mathematical part, but I need to understand it. And I need to manage it. Okay, is this the only way to do it? Professor. Yes, sir. Okay, so in that case, no, no, so I'm, I'm bringing this up because we don't require the drilling, so we don't account for that. I go back to the previous case. I make only model B models. In another factory, we don't have Erica. In another factory, you have who you have. Who talks more in this class? Jerry talks more in this class. You have Jerry. And Jerry said, what if I make this in one hour? And what if this doesn't go to half, it goes to two and a half? Is this better off situation or not? I have a different solution. Why? Because I had impact to productivity in different ways. <coughs> Who is a better manager? Erica or Jerry? And why? Jerry increased the productivity here by smaller factor from three to two and a half, when Erica got double. As a result, the result is that we have different solution. And different solution gives me different profit. What do I want to do? I want to understand the graph in a simple problem. And this week, that's the only thing I want to achieve. In this file, you have many, many different examples. Do I have the time to go through all of them? Is my question number one. The answer is really no. Do I want to go through all of them? Again, the answer is no, because if I understand one problem, then I learn my lessons and I can apply it into all. And I have it and I can be able to do it. I want to go to see what is happening. What is happening? I want to go on and see what do I want to see? Do I want to see mathematics? No. 
I want to see what is my problem. And if I see what is my problem, I want to know what do I have effect, impact. One thing that I can be able to do is make a different cases of the profit per unit by managing different things. Can I go on and figure out how to do it? Yes, but that becomes a little bit more complicated. How much complicated? Like the question that I had before. I asked, can you make more money by working less? And the answer was, you don't have a line, you have a curve. Second thing, you produce. What is the real problem that you have here? The real problem that we have here is we manage productivity. And you manage productivity by using different technology <coughs> or using different people that they use the same machinery differently or they use different machinery. It is choices that you have to make. But before you make the choice, you need to have what is the impact of the choice. And then you have these numbers here. What are these numbers? These numbers here tells you how much is your available labor that you have. What is my available labor that I have? I have 16 people today in class for an hour and 40 minutes. And what do I want to do? I want you to be able to do much more than anyone else, not only in CUNY, but all be all New York City would be able to get from this hour. And what do I know? Everybody would follow the book. And the book is focusing only on one thing, to get a solution. Is this Waku? Now, when I go here. Who is in the class? I need to present. What do I present? I don't want to present the black thing. But I have a black thing. I didn't do it intentionally. Do you see a black screen or did you see anything? No. It just shows that you stopped presenting. That's the right nothing presented. What? I don't see anything presented. Great, some response.